This is Rob Kilmer. Another classic example of completely unjustified fear. That's what we will be talking about this week on You Defend It. Welcome to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer. The phone number to call into the show is 607-772-1290. Callers to the show will need to take a position, be able to defend it with an argument that is factual, not emotional. And if you can't make your point without insulting someone, you can't make your point on this show. Callers and guests on this show will be treated with complete respect. For my part, I will ask questions that matter and give people the opportunity to answer. My website is www.youdefendit.com. That's Y-O-U-DefendIt.com. You can give me your comments on the show anytime. By Friday of each week, I will have the topic up for the next show. You can also visit my blog through the site, read my posts, and leave your own. You can always listen to the show live on streaming audio on www.wnbf.com. And my show is then uploaded to youdefendit.com later on Saturdays, and you can listen to it from there if you missed it live. Finally, there is a debate suggestion section on my website. You can leave me your thoughts on topics, debaters, and questions. All right, last week I had a caller uh, mention SB2099, Senate Bill 2099. And... He had mentioned that it would require uh, uh, Americans to put on their 2009-1040 federal tax form all guns that they have or own, and it would require uh, a tax per gun. I decided, well, actually I promised on the air that I would, I would look that up. And I try and do that uh, with everything that I hear on the show that I'm not uh, already familiar with. But when I looked this one up, uh, it became the focus of today's show. This is from Snopes.com, the Handgun Safety and Registration Act. The claim, a bill currently before Congress would require all handgun owners list their guns on federal income tax returns. Uh, and as you'll recall, that is precisely what the caller said last week. The uh, claim itself, false. This originated from a bill that was actually introduced into Congress in 2000. And I will read uh, from the Snopes article about this right now. Origin. The item quoted above about a pending congressional bill requiring gun owners to list their guns on federal income tax is both outdated and contains a good deal of misinformation. The reference bill, SB 2000, or 2099, the Handgun Safety and Registration Act, is not currently before Congress. It was introduced to the Senate back in February 2000, not 2009, and it was referred to the Committee on Finance where it never even got a vote. It also had no provisions for requiring handgun owners to list their guns on federal income tax returns. The issue back in 2000, introduced in February of that, February of that year by Senator Jack Reed, a Democrat from Rhode Island, uh, was the Handgun Reg Safety and Registration Act of 2000, and it sought to amend the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 to require the registration of handguns and for other purposes. The National Firearms Act of 1934 established, among, among other things, a tax on both the manufacture and transfer of firearms and required that each person who transfers a firearm file an application complete with photograph and fingerprints with the Internal Revenue Authorities and authorize the creation of a central registry of all firearms in the United States which are not in the possession or under the control of the United States. However, the definition of firearm used by the 1934 Act did not include rifles, shotguns, or handguns. It applied only to specialized weapons, 
such as short-barreled rifles and shotguns, machine guns, silencers, and other destructive devices, including grenades, bombs, rockets, missiles, and mines. Uh, S-2099 would have expanded the definition of firearm to include handguns, thus subjecting them to these requirements as well. Okay, uh, there is one provision in this article, or one uh, uh, paragraph in here about what the intent of the article was, and I will read that last here. The intent of this bill was to effect nationwide registration of handguns, and its intent is unmistakable. As stated in the press release about Senator Reid's bill, quote, the bill would require registration of all handguns, including those currently in private possession, and would make it a felony for any person to transfer a handgun to another individual without prior law enforcement approval. Background checks would be performed on all primary and secondary transfers of guns, of handguns, including retail sales, gun shows, internet sales, and all private sales, end quote. Okay, last week, somebody called my show and asked me what I thought of this. And we talked as if it were true. I told him I would look it up, but based on what he was saying, I discussed the merits of it with him. In other words, if it's, uh, if it's a measure intended to identify handguns or who owns them, you know, that's different than a tax. And if it's a tax, then, you know, that gets us into something else. What a bunch of wasted time that was. And I'm not uh, blaming the caller. I'm blaming the people who sent the information to the caller. All he did was believe it. You know, if you split this into two columns, the good faith and bad faith people, he's in the good faith column, as was I when I talked about it with him. The bad faith people are the ones who made this up. And when I typed in, when I Google searched SP2099, I got 50 ants, uh, hits right off the bat, all of them saying hoax, fraud, rumor. And that's what we're about anymore. That's how we end up with death panels becoming part of the national discussion on health care reform. They don't exist. It is ridiculous to spend even one minute discussing them. But as a country, that's where we're at. This poor guy who called in last week actually believes this. Or believed it. I hope he's listening now and knows that he doesn't have to be worried about this because it's a complete fraud. We're going to take a quick break and come back. But I want to talk about this more broadly as to what it, what it actually takes to, to put that rumor out there. And I don't mean from an administrative standpoint, from a practical standpoint. I mean what it says about the person who does it. What kind of character defect or defects are at play when this happens? Okay, we will be right back. You are listening to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer right here on News Radio 1290 WNBF. Welcome back to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer. The phone number to call into the show is 772-1290. That's area code 607. Uh, we had a minor problem with the phones in the first uh, quarter of the hour, but that's fixed now. If you want to call in, uh, we are able to pick up now. Okay. Left off talking about what it takes to put that kind of misinformation out there. Uh, and specifically, we we're talking about this 
bill in the Senate, SB 2099, uh, that a caller made this show aware of last week that allegedly required you to put on your taxes this year the guns that you own and would have included a tax on each gun, all completely untrue. Here's what I think it takes to put a rumor like that out there. It takes contempt for your fellow Americans. That's what it takes. If you can't win an argument on the merits, just scare people. That's simple enough. That doesn't take any particular talent or morals or dignity. I mean, just think about that decision. Just lie about it. Just lie. Just make it up. I know how to get people behind me. Fear. There's no question in my mind that the person who called my show last week believed every word he was saying and was concerned about it. What a waste of that person's time. And a waste of mine and a waste of yours. Because he and I were talking, and you were listening, about something that doesn't exist. A myth. This show is only an hour long. We shouldn't spend any time in here talking about things that are, you know, phantoms. You know, we also talked last week in here about phantom gun legislation that was imminent from the Obama administration that had resulted in a run on ammunition so intense that law enforcement can't get theirs. Where are the laws? Where are the bills? Where are the proposed restrictions? They don't exist. Nothing. Okay. Maria is on the line. Are you there? Good morning, Mr. Kilmer. Yeah, I'm here. Good morning. Welcome to the doing? show. Good. Well, I uh, I know you don't like to have people express feelings, but I'm going to express a feeling that involves some emotion. No profanity. Oh, I don't bother to <laughs> use that. There's a good many other words in the English language that can do the <laughs> trick. <laughs> but uh, I, I do want to thank you for this program. I am going to miss you a great deal. You have uh, been an honest moderator of, of the subject. This has been a class act. You have been an extreme pleasure to have this particular type of flavor in what you do on the air. And I'm so glad that I had the pleasure to be able to listen to these Saturday mornings and to wish you a great deal of success in your pursuit of apparently what is your dream and it sounds like a good one and let's hope people pay attention because a clean debate without a lot of I don't know I think I'll skip that word uh, and there is one thing about what you're discussing right now you know my son had not a lot to do with the development of the computer through the years uh, while he was alive also, he was premier in robotics. Okay. And so what I want to say about nanotech and modern tech, it was a, a wonderful tool probably invented with the greatest intention. However, and then here comes the feeling too, the slimy aspect of Homo sapiens has found a way to pervert its, I think, original thought. It is a wonderful tool, but it has, it has become a, man a manipulative tool by some people who, and I think you understand what I'm saying. Sure. These Internet rumors become part of the conversation so, on any topic. Anyway, I do want to wish you bona fortuna, the best of, of luck and good fortune in this venture of yours, and thank you for this program. It has been an extreme pleasure. And have a very good day, sir. Well, I will now. Bye. Bye. Thanks very much. Well, that was certainly nice of her.
and I hope to have been honest and fair over the last two years. And I hope to bring an honest and fair debate to the country in the coming years. That's the plan. Okay. Um, we had talked about, I was starting to talk about what it takes, in my mind, to make the decision to put this kind of information out there. And I'm referring to that Senate bill that the caller uh, brought to us last week. When you make that decision, you've, you've decided to, to do something negative to other people. That's what you've decided. You've decided to distract them and scare them into supporting you. What does that say about you? I'll tell you what else it takes in addition to contempt for your fellow Americans. It takes cowardice. You don't have the guts to face the reality of your situation, so you make up a new reality. The reality is that Obama has proposed nothing in the way of ammunition or guns. Nothing. I mean, I'm not wild about the things he's done, and many people rightfully say he's trying to do too much. But even with all that, guns aren't part of it. So what do you do if you're fanatical about uh, guns? You just make something up. Oh, it's coming. A bill's coming. It's not, and it hasn't. Now the police can't get ammunition. But acknowledging that there is no imminent legislation, that doesn't keep the money coming in. So you just make something up. And as Americans, that's what we're tolerating these days. And I, I try and, and give you an idea mentally of what, the, what a you defend it debate would look like on this issue. Somebody claiming that, you know, there is a real threat to an ability to buy ammunition would be asked, what is that threat specifically? What is it you're talking about? Back it up. What bill? What law? What? And if it's nothing, the idea is you would face an American public in prime time on national television and be exposed. which is the way it should be. I picked up the uh, Press and Sun Bulletin on the way in today. And in the national page, there's an article that says, with a headline, Health Care Talks Focus on Illegal Immigrants. And my thought was, and is, why focus on illegal immigrants? That's completely backwards. Why not fix health care, particularly the costs, and then decide whether to extend that fix to illegal immigrants? There are arguments on both sides, legitimate arguments. Let's air them out. They're here illegally. You know, illegally. That means they shouldn't get anything. Fine. Except when we're talking about communicable diseases. Somebody died of swine flu at Cornell. You want people who have uh, contagious diseases to be treated. You got to get over your hate or even your principle. And I should clarify that. You don't, I don't think people who take a stand against illegal immigration are necessarily hateful. The loudest voices certainly are. But... In general, it is certainly a reasonable, principled stance to take that somebody who is here illegally should not enjoy the benefits of this country. That's reasonable. But do you want to foster an environment where people with contagious diseases aren't treated? Does that make sense? I say no. Treat them 
you know, it, it's if ever there was a, a cut off your nose to spite your face, that's it. I'd rather risk infection from a potentially fatal disease than extend treatment to illegal immigrants. Like all issues this country faces, they're a little more complicated than Cable would have you believe. Stopping health care reform in its tracks because people we are taught to be suspicious of might benefit from it, that is a child's logic. We are better than that. We deserve better than that. We deserve a better debate. How about limiting care to contagious diseases? That seems like a simple compromise. I don't know if it's the best answer, but it should be one of the things we're talking about. Okay, we're going to take a break here at 8.30 for local news and be back after that. You are listening to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer on News Radio 1290 WMBF Binghamton. We'll take calls in the second half and keep talking about this. Welcome back to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer. The phone number to call into the show is 607-772-1290. You may have seen this week uh, that during President Obama's uh, speech before a joint session of Congress, one of the uh, a Republican congressmen yelled out, You lie. That's debate in America. You know, Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill, who was the Speaker of the House at the time, they got along fine. They agreed on almost nothing. Everybody wants to be like Reagan. It should start with conducting themselves like Reagan. You know, his, his motto was, we can disagree without being disagreeable. And he stuck to that. I think that's why... He was so revered. We don't see much of that anymore. Some guy named Frank from Appalachian is on line one. Frank. Good morning, Rob. How are you? Hi. You know, I was I was surprised to hear that your uh, your program is ending. Well, it's time to uh, put all my time that I have able or that is available to me to devote to anything other than work to uh, these debates and getting them up and running. It is incredibly hard, I will tell you that, but yeah, I'm going to get I, it done. I believe it. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know how you could have done all of that. Uh, you know, this morning, I'd, I'd like to pull a Bill Clinton and just schmooze for a few minutes instead of going into politics. Uh, I, I think <laughs> I've, I've been with Yeah, I've been working harder than I ever have down here in Chappaqua, you know. <laughs> okay. uh, that's my best Bill Clinton. You know, you would never, never guess it, but I am far to the right of you. I'm stunned. You're stunned. I actually, I'm far to the right of Camogen, probably. Wow. Uh, sort of reminds me of your reference to Tip O'Neill and, and, and Reagan. Um, your, your program has given me a chance to vent, and I really enjoyed the polemics. Um, I'm glad. Uh, l l let's turn the tables a little bit and talk about you a little bit. You know, you, you're a lawyer. You're a practiced and proficient debater. Some some people would probably even say homileticist. And it would be easy for you, I think, to make mincemeat of most callers. But you really didn't do this. Although, I sometimes felt you were biting your tongue. The point of the show is to give people uh, a place where they can call and defend something that they care about. They right. can get ridiculed anywhere else and that isn't to imply you know i've i learn as i go here you know there was 
for instance, uh, when we were talking about health care and one of the first callers talked about, you know, where's the emphasis on, on health, on vitamins and supplements? And I thought, uh, okay, thanks. But then there was another call about that. You know, that's a legitimate point. Exactly. Well, you know, you, you, let, you let callers voice their opinions, and, you know, what more can one ask of a talk show host? So bottom line is I think it was a really good run. Uh, I appreciate the DVD. You gave me a kick in the pants. Now I have to upgrade from my VHS system. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, my system is old and tired like me, so I have to upgrade both. Uh, I expect to see your name up in lights someday, uh, you know, produced by Rob Kilmer, directed by Rob Kilmer, maybe even choreographed by Rob Kilmer. Well, I mean, I, let me tell you this. You will never see my name in lights because uh, I believe that's part of the problem. Like my... My the program we did, like the the printed program we did for the debate, doesn't right. have my name in it. Wow! One on one productions. You know the problem is that everybody. I have a friend who. I digress a little bit here. I have a friend, who runs campaigns locally, and whenever. Uh, whenever she meets somebody who asks her, "Will you run my campaign?" She evaluates in her mind whether this person wants to, be something, or do something. If they want to be something, she says no. Mm. If she thinks they want to do something, she says yes. I don't want to be something. I want to do something. I don't want to write a book. I don't want anybody to know who I don't. My name isn't necessary for this. The concept is you defend it, says everything you need to know about what my debates are about. Uh, my picture is not up on the website for my show. It's not on the website for the radio station, despite being asked, I think. The focus is all wrong that way, and I think it's part of the problem. So although I appreciate your uh, prediction that it'll be up in lights, it never will be. You know, and I thought there would be, you know, Limbaugh, Hannity, Beck, and Kilmer, Don't, oh. just like peas in a pod. Enough to make me cease being a vegetarian. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, if I see you on Court Street, I'll tell you a few good lawyer jokes. So good luck. They're all good. Okay, we'll see you, Frank. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, we have Judy, I think, on line two. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Welcome I to wanted, the show. I, I wanted to uh, tell you that I was talking to a sergeant major, uh, Green Beret sergeant major, and he said that there is a law against those guys speaking out in the when they're in session like that. Um, that yeah, well, they can be censured for it, and the well, Democrats are looking at it. on the books. It. He should have oh, been yeah? escorted right out of the chamber and fined and, uh, you know, made to apologize or whatever. And he was. He, he said, they told me I had to say, I'm sorry. Yeah, not <laughs> much know, of an apology. It, not really. I didn't think that was much. But he also said that there's a strong agenda there to discredit him and not let him get this on the far right. To you know, keep him from having uh, any success, but and I don't think it's fair to the American public. I really don't. I really think we need health care reform in this bill, uh, this this era now. I mean, the Canadians have it. Probably the Europeans have it, and in, in umpteen different countries, it's a social program. It needs to be done. It, and you know, we need to take care of all of. It seems like in the United States, we take care of the very young, and we take care of the very old. The rest of it, you're on your own. And, you know, Something. you can get it if you have the box, but you can't get it if you have a problem. Well, there's so, no question that it, it cries out for a fix, and all I know does. about Joe Wilson is what he opposes. Well, and that's I'm the not problem. Sure He's I not know all of what he opposes. But well, he, he, he apparently opposes uh, any extension of benefits to illegal immigrants. Fine. What well, is what is them. Well, what is Joe they're, Wilson's plan for the rest They've of us? They've got this trade pact that they got d divvied up. My, my uh, relative is, is a, a hospital director, and he came in for a vacation and said to us, do you know that they get free medical? All they have to do is go through the emergency room. And I said, you mean to tell me I'm a taxpaying or uh, uh, at least a productive citizen somewhat in this country, and I can't even, and my next-door neighbors, the, the new Americans, can't. They can get it. I can't. My senator comes up to see us and, and tell us how good we're doing it to hold on in the dairy industry. And, and I said, you've got to do something. They've, they've kneecapped us. They're, they're just cutting us in half. And, and when I say to myself, my government helps these guys 
and they make the WTO rules so that those guys at the very top of this industry make tons of money, and I don't get nothing, and I can't get health care. Do you know how angry some of these farmers are going to get? Sure. It is almost enough to Polaroid well, and similar to the Civil War. And the, the, Watch yourself. The, uh, it will come. The solution here is solutions. The you know, like like Joe Wilson. Want to get them. They'll give you a, a rebate for your mattress and a rebate for your clunker car, but they won't help s- situate the farmers where they're getting. And, it, and it's not just dairy. I mean, Cargill, Conagra, Archer Daniels, Midland, do it to the wheat and corn growers and the bean growers. I mean, they keep a lot of these farmers with the WTO rules uh, at a very hard dis- disadvantage. And, and the only way that they can get some kind of semblance of staying on top of their bills sometimes when it's drought and riddled with this and that and uh, it is the backdoor money. <clears throat> well, I got to I got to go to break here and I got a few more callers, but well, Are uh, you going to be on a website now? Uh, I think the you defend it website will probably be converted over to a uh, website devoted to the debate series, but yeah. So and I'll you'll be, letting be able people... to be in, gotten in touch with? Oh yeah. Okay. Sure. Have a good luck and on your new career. Thanks very much. Thanks Bye-bye. for calling. Bye. All right. Um, get to Lucas. You there? Yeah. We'll yes, do I this am. one before the break. How are you? All right. I just wanted to make several points. First, right around in the 2001 time period and all that, there was a number of Senate votes for you know for a number of uncontrolled measures, which in the Senate because when the Democrats took over, and I think that was basically used as sort of throwing a stop to their uh, hard-left constituencies who were for gun control. And at the time... Did they pass? Even though George W. Bush said he would sign into law any gun control measure that Congress passed, they knew at the time, with Republicans in control of the House, that the, those measures were going to be up. Right. So the reality was that there was no real uh, possibility of those laws coming into and, effect, and, and they did I think a lot of Democrats should pay attention to the fact that now the Democrats have overwhelming power. They're not doing anything because they're trying to get other things in place first. So I don't wouldn't expect gun control at least until F, unless they hold on through the 2010 election. Then they might try something then, but there's nothing immediate. As far as the ammunition situation is concerned, a lot of this is due to George W. Bush's lackadaisical effort, uh, lackadaisical attitude towards the war effort because. He did not make take measures that he could have taken to increase ammunition production for the military and uh, by extension for uh, civilian law enforcement, because right now the federal government operates three ammunition plants or owns three ammunition plants, which are operated by the private uh, gun companies because they know how to do, run the thing. But the thing is, why not build more ammunition plants, especially in chronically depressed areas around the country? You, and, and have that supply the government's needs. Well, that's, that sounds is something like a they, viable option. Yeah, because it is something that they already do to a lesser extent, but it's just you have, have liberal presidents who do not think of why not increase ammunition supply for the military, for law enforcement, so you're not going to be caught up in, let's say, when you have a panic buying in the civilian sector. I mean, that is a practical solution. I agree. Now, as far as the health care situation is concerned, you can see, well, cheat community with diseases. The trouble is, is the illegal aliens that are coming in and are hitting the hospitals, a, lar- a very large percentage of the cost is immigrants who have communicable diseases. You could say, just do it to the vet, but that is almost all the cost. In other words, you have people who have TB, you have people who have hepatitis, and you can go right down the list. These are all either sexually transmitted or they could be airborne diseases like well, TB. If you're not going to stop them from getting in in the first place, which we clearly do not do well, a good enough job of, then what is the answer when they get here? Well, I mean, unless Maintain you, the threat to public health? Unless you do a situation where you simply uh, you make a deal with some chronically poor countries in Africa and you know you set up hospitals or whatever situation, you know, like you, take, you could take... Uh, illegal immigrants who are convicted of crimes here instead of having the states having to pay the cost of uh, all these illegal immigrants. You simply ship them to Africa where you simply ha- uh, have the governments agree to have prison facilities and where they have much, much lower la- labor costs. 
and let the, those countries uh, take care of the prisoners and, and let them serve their sentences there and not in the United States. So they can't use their prison time to claim, well, I've been in the country for 20 years. I should I, become a citizen. I would assume anybody who we ship out of this country is going back <laughs> to their own country. Uh, okay, thanks for the call. i got to go to a break here. Okay. Thanks very Bye. much. Bye. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break here, and when we come back, uh, there's one more caller right now that I will get to, or who I will get to, and uh, we'll finish talking about the uh, use of fear this week and things like Senate Bill 2099, uh, which does not exist as has been alleged. You are listening to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer right here on News Radio 1290 WNBF Binghamton. <laughs> Welcome back to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer. The phone number to call into the show is 607-772-1290. I think I have Sam on line one. Are you there? Yes, I am, Rob. Welcome How to the show. Doing? Good. Hey, I think Australia has some uh, outback land available if we'd like to start setting up colonies again. Thank you <laughs> um, for that about- wonderful suggestion, Sam. <laughs> hey, good luck to you. Thanks. You know, we wish you all the best. Um, with the incident and, and uh, with uh, Wilson, you know, it's, it, it was definitely the wrong thing to do. However, it's not without precedent. George Bush was booed in a, uh, a State of the Union address. Nothing came of it. Uh, Bill Clinton had um, congressional talks that were disrupted. It, it, you know, it, is it right? Absolutely not. It's certainly wrong. However, it's over. Uh, you know, <laughs> if, if you're going to be fair, be fair. If nothing happened in the past, then that's the way it is. As far as cens- censuring him or whatever, I, I think... Uh, it's a waste it, of time to censure him. It's a waste of time at this point. As a matter of fact... we got I more think, pressing uh, needs. I think a a lot of the stuff that's going on now is a waste of time, and I don't think it matters what party's involved. I see no change from uh, those in control, no matter which party they represent. I think it's gotten to the point where our political representatives represent their interests and not the interests of the people. I think that's apparent, especially in New York State. And until things start to change... I mean, a congressman needs to spend one term in office to get a pension. Two years to get a pension. Right. That's not serving the people. No. I think the the only thing that's going to help us in this country is to start turning over some of those politicians when they don't serve the people, period. And I think the best way to do that is to expose them for not being serious. And if there was a forum where people could see an actual debate of this nation's pressing issues and compare it to what they see in Congress and on cable, I believe, I honestly I'm believe, Rob, I don't you get that change. It's just, it's, a, it's just a matter of the pressing issues. I think I'd like to see how some of our political representatives have benefited far above the salaries that they receive. You know, <laughs> How can you build a half a million dollar cottage somewhere? How do you fly around the world? You know, it, who pays it? It's a well. It was a uh, paid for by Joe Blow Business, baloney. The taxpayers pay for everything, and you know, it's it, the only way we're going to stop things is by changing some of the elected officials that are in office. In New York State is a perfect example. You have three people that control everything that happens in the state. And And they don't don't do it well. (laughs) Well, they do it for themselves. Right. They don't do it for the taxpayers in New York. I was behind uh, uh, our governor in the beginning when he came out with a budget that basically said that 
everybody's going to feel the pain and we're going to we're going to make hard decisions and then he faded everybody except his office was going to feel the pain <laughs> probably true i got a couple things i got to get to before the end okay, of the show good here. luck rap thanks very much bye bye you know uh you probably heard on the news um before or even during this show during the breaks that thousands are expected at a national tea party and that tens of thousands of conservative activists are descending on the nation's capital for today's tea party style protest and they're uh they are protesting excessive government spending now the way cable makes you think you know everybody wants to go back to what somebody else did and com and compare it you know Sam, who called, said, you know, there's precedent for this and nothing was done before. And we should just move on. And he's right. And when you get, when you read this article or when you hear this news about conservative activists, I mean, for some people, and I confess to being one of them, my initial reaction is, where were they when George Bush was doubling the debt? And you know what the answer is? It doesn't matter they still have a good point they have a valid point they have a debatable point you know if the arguments only ever boil down to saying well I know where somebody said something different in the past so we can dispose of the argument then we never resolve anything what's resolved there it would be easy to say where were these conservatives when the money was being spent during the Bush years but making that point would do nothing about our current problem. It wouldn't address it. It's a side street. We need to stay on Main Street, which is the, the debt. But we're taught to think, you know, argumentatively about every person that make, who makes a point, every point that we hear, it's just as simple as finding something contradictory in their past and you can discard them. That's what cable engenders. That's what cable fosters. That's what these shout fests, that's what this pro wrestling of a debate that we have, that's the consequence of it. That's how people think. Well, he didn't say this five years ago. I don't care. He or she may have had a change of mind good there's no question that money is being spent by the United States government at unprecedented levels right now should it be let's debate it but simply saying well the people who are complaining about it now weren't complaining about it that that doesn't get us anywhere enough I don't care I want to move forward, not find a soundbite from eight years ago and say, well, that's that. That's not that. It doesn't resolve anything. If you have a valid point, I want to hear it. If you've got an argument, if you've got a solution, then defend it. Today on its merits today, I don't want to hear criticism of your argument on the basis of you having said something different in the past it doesn't my goal is, is solutions to the problems this country faces and I'll, I'll take whoever has one you know if your if your house was on fire and your your neighbor yelled across to you your house is on fire would you would you look or would you say well so was yours five years ago no you'd look We don't. We are content to simply argue the distractions rather than confront the real issues and adopt solutions. I don't think this country can sustain itself on this path. What major problem has been resolved in the last 10 years? 
George Bush had a an idea about privatizing, partially, minimally, Social Security. He was obliterated in that argument. But he was not defeated by people who had a solution of their own. They had criticism of his. It's 2009, Social Security, long term, what's the solution? There isn't one. He tried. Healthcare reform. I don't hear competing alternatives. I don't hear anything but criticism of the current bills that are in Congress. Where's the alternative? You know, this country has to get itself to a point where criticism is not enough. Criticism alone won't cut it. You got to show up with your own solution or get out of the way. That should become the standard. And that is a standard worthy of Americans. I've said it a million times, and I will say it a million times more. We need debates worthy of the issues being discussed and the Americans whose lives are affected by them, because they are affected by them. And I'm going to keep going till I get it. I wish I could do both. I wish I could pursue that and do this show, but I can't. Okay, well, thanks for listening to You Defend It, and I will be back next week. You are listening to You Defend It with Rob Kilmer right here on News Radio 1290, WNBF, Binghamton.